Welcome to the Your Life, Your Brand podcast with myself, James Oliver. Please hit the follow or subscribe button. It would mean the absolute world to me. Today, I'm joined by a female entrepreneur, Patty Ricarte. She's the founder and CEO of Caddo Networks. Patty has experience in fields like fundraising for startups and investment banking. She talks about her struggles starting a new company during the pandemic, becoming a successful founder and CEO in New York City, and why she believes remote networking is a necessity in today's society. So let's dive right in. Patty, thanks for taking the time out of your day and joining me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, James, for having me over. So I guess the best place for us to start is at the beginning. How did it all start for you? So, um, well, I'm, I'm Spanish. So I started law and business in, in Madrid, Spain. Um, you know, I come from a family of lawyers. Well, my dad is a lawyer. There's a lot of family members in my family that also work in the legal space. So I was sort of really pushed to, to study law as well. But um, to be honest, as soon as I started, I remember on my second, third year of uh, uni of college, I said, okay, this is not really the path that I that I want to overtake. So um, I actually started working in investment banking uh, in London. So uh, yeah, I went to live to London. I started working in Morgan Stanley um, in the M&A team for consumer retail uh, for a couple of years there. And uh, to be honest, that's where I actually started realizing about, you know, the importance of relationships and networking um, to win business. Um, basically, I mean, and we can talk a li- about it uh, in a little bit more detail later, but um, my most successful MDs for managing directors were the ones that would show up at meetings, you know, without a deck. And they were just great networkers. They always knew everything, you know, about their potential prospects. So um, obviously, you know, that helped them a lot win business. But uh, but anyway, so after I did several years in, in investment banking, you know, many long nights <laughs> or all nighters directly, I decided that I, you know, that I want to make the, the change or the jump to the, to the tech world. So I started working for different startups. Um, I worked first for a startup called Fever, an event discovery platform. Over there, I was head of finance and investor relations. So I participated during their Series B, Series C fundraising. And then once, you know, well, I don't want to say that I got enough, but basically I wanted to uh, diversify a little bit more, you know, like my knowledge and uh, get a little bit more exposure to the business side. So I jumped to another startup called 21 Buttons. It was a fashion tech startup based in Barcelona. And there I was head of corporate strategy and expansion director. So um, I led the UK and French markets of one of the business divisions. So there was a lot of uh, yeah, traveling involved in uh, going back and forth here and there. But, um, but yeah, and um, basically when, when I decided, you know, that it was my turn that I wanted to start Cato, I, well, I obviously like I quit my job and I joined a uh, coding bootcamp for four months so that I could learn a little bit how to code, even though I did not code the application myself, because otherwise it would have been a tremendous disaster. <laughs> but, um, but at least, you know, it gave me some basic knowledge to speak to engineers. So um, after I did that, I decided to move to the States to start, to start the company. So I now live in New York and uh, yeah, in December 2020, I hired my my first engineer, and uh, well, then uh, that was when the story started, pretty much. And since then, we've been developing, and uh, we went to market at the end of last year. <laughs> so, growing up in a family of lawyers, obviously, the natural route for you would have been law. You went yeah. and against the grain and went investment banking. You once had enough of all the hours, and then you went into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Even though I must admit that the hours did not change that much. <laughs> I thought they were, I thought they would improve, but uh, no, they did not. Even if it was working for another startup, I mean, the hours were still very long. It, it's a, I mean, it's a very tough um, journey, I would say, because I mean, uh, the roles that I was having in these startups were not easy either. You know, it was management roles, leadership roles. So anyway, they required a lot of hours. However, I must say that, the reward that I got out of them was was a lot higher than the one that I got in investment banking, for sure. Working in startups, 
obviously the day came. When did you decide to make the change and become a founder or CEO or entrepreneur or whatever buzzword we want to use for it? And what gap did you see in the market? Yeah. So as I was saying before, to be honest, it all started while I was in banking. It's just that uh, the idea, you know, started to develop as well throughout my years in uh, in, uh, in startups. Um, but again, as I, as I was saying before, um, when I was in banking, I realized that, you know, it didn't matter how good the firm was at what it did. You know, um, I worked in Morgan Stanley. I mean, we were like a bunch of analysts working very long hours and the same like with associates and VPs and uh, lots of like very skilled uh, managing directors bringing in the deals. But the reality is that the client at the end of the day, the final decision in terms of who would take the deal wouldn't be based on the technical skills of, of the team that was involved. It was pretty much the relationship that they held with the, with the bank. So say, for example, there was a pitch um, between, you know, like uh, Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, the client, which is one or the other based on, you know, the impression that the director um, generated or just, you know, the, the strength of the relationship that they held um, with that director. But the reality is that, you know, like tracking, being able basically like to go out to network takes a lot of time, then tracking everyone's information, all of your communications, just not even just like a business wise, but also like personally wise, you know, like, okay, what are your interests? What do you like to tweet about? Have you been promoted recently? I mean, it does take a lot of time. And the reality, and now talking a little bit about, about the, the cap in the market, is that whenever you look at what there is out there and you look at CRMs, so a Salesforce type of solution, the reality is that they are very focused on sales teams, right? On, uh, you know, <clears throat> a bunch of salespeople that basically just pitch or do a demo of a product and then they win it or they lose it, but that's it. But the reality is in that most of the services markets, again, like investment banking, legal, actually consulting, or even just like management of very large companies, it's not about sales, it's about relationships. And again, there's no tool out there that is focused on relationships instead of doing sales. So that's how Cato sort of like came along. And, uh, and the reality is that when I was um, working for the different startups and in the first one, uh, I had to do a lot of like investor relations. So, you know, that was also one strong use case The I worked very close together with a, with a CEO who was basically all of the time, you know, trying to track his relationships with the different investors, where, what they were going through, uh, whether they were being again, like promoted, all of the communications. And it was very easy for the relationships to fall um, between the cracks. So um, that's one of the moments where I realized like, okay, there's no, there's nothing really out there that can really, you know, like uh, solve the, the problem, the pain point. And, uh, and again, in the second startup, it was a, pretty much a little bit the same uh, when I was, you know, during my times as expansion director, there was a lot of um, relationships that I had to take care of in terms of like partnerships. So uh, again, like the CRMs out there, they were, that were mostly thought for salespeople and managing pipelines or just like email marketing did not cover my necessities. So um, that's when I decided, you know, at some point uh, after I also, you know, like got tired of uh, working for, uh, for other people, I said like, okay, I think now I'm ready to work for myself. I got a little bit of, um, you know, uh, of knowledge of the different, you know, verticals that I, that I need. So I had been working in finance, I had been working in strategy. And the second startup, I was very, you know, involved in product. Um, then the only thing that I was missing was sort of like those more like technical skills in terms of software development, which is why I went through the coding bootcamp. But once I had that sort of like 360 um, knowledge or, or background, that's when I said, okay, now, now it's my turn. Um, and yeah, and again, that's when I decided, you know, to go to New York and, uh, and, and start building Caro all of with, uh, all with the hope of, you know, improving the ability of employees to better like a uh, network and, you know, improve or humanize their professional relationships. Cause at the end of the day, um, 
net business, right, is about it's about people. So what we want to make sure is that we help professionals build more meaningful relationships, more human that will eventually turn turn into deals. Obviously, you spoke about humanizing relationships um, for a business environment. And I totally agree that a lot of the CRMs out there are built for a sales perspective and just move yeah. someone along a pipeline rather than really encompassing the relationship that the individuals have together. So mm-hmm. with Cadu being founded on changing the way we build professional relationships and networking, I'd be interested to get your views on the importance of networking in business and how that's changed in the 2020s. I mean, obviously, COVID has had a lot of impact in the sense that I would say it has actually dehumanized a lot of the professional relationships. Like now people will just jump on a on a quick, you know, Zoom call, just like 20 minutes and and, and just move on which I think that at the beginning it was fine, but um, it has come to a point where people are finding the necessity to go back out there and go back, you know, to meeting their clients, trying to get to know them a little bit more. Because, I mean, the reality is that even though COVID has changed the ecosystem in terms of how we do business, and as in, like, you know, like it's a lot faster, it's a lot more, I would say even like efficient because you don't you you don't need to move around. The reality is that you still need that human factor. And even if you don't meet like people, you know, personally and you network through Zoom events or whatever, um, people still do appreciate, you know, the fact that you can bring a human factor to the table, that you, you know, make the effort of knowing them before you come into a meeting. So, you know, before we jumped onto the podcast, you told me like, okay, I did a little bit of research on, on, on yourself. And that's something that people appreciate. And one of the benefits of Caro, you know, beyond helping you go out there and network and exchange contact information and so on and so forth, we do that gathering information gathering effort for you so that whenever you go into a meeting whether that is you know at a coffee shop because or at a client's office or through zoom uh, Cato is going to make that effort you know of gathering all of that information that you should know about that person um so that we help you you know bring a more human and more relevant conversation uh to well to the table or to the you know to the zoom meeting um to the zoom meeting pretty much um, but again, in terms of how relationships or networking has, uh, in terms of how it has changed, uh, obviously it's a lot more virtual, it's a lot more digital, but I think like the base hasn't changed that much. I mean, the human element is still just as important as it was before, even though people do not see each other in person. Because again, like people still appreciate the fact that, you know, that that you care for them, that you look up their LinkedIn, that you look up their Twitter, that you're fully informed of your communications with that person. I mean, that still hasn't changed, even though the medium now may be digital, maybe Zoom, but the values and the core of networking and how we do business um, have been maintained, I would say. So you've brought Cado into the environment. How is it that Cado helps with humanizing networking for the digital space? Mm-hmm. So um, basically, Caro has two sides of it. So, I mean, we're an enterprise networking and relationship manager, right? So on the one hand side, we have the part of networking, and, the, and on the other hand, we have the part of building um, you know, relationships or more meaningful and human relationships. So on the part of networking, um, basically what we offer companies are interactive digital business profiles. So basically beyond your contact information, you can put a bunch of links, you know, um, you can put all of your social networks there, you can include a video. So basically whenever you meet a client, whether that is again like digitally or in person, because again, you can share your cuddle either through a link or through your QR code, however you, you want. But basically, you're able to share it with your client the information, the information that you seem relevant. 
Okay, so imagine, for example, you're a real estate broker. You can, uh, in your profile, you can include links to um, your different reviews or to a mortgage application or to other listings or a video or a promotional video of your company. But basically, whatever information you think that, you know, your prospects or clients should know about you and your company. Um, Oh, with the aim, you know, of activating clients earlier on in the in the in the workflow. That is the first part. And then in terms of the second part and the relationship building process. So once you have a contact in Cato, as I was saying, Cato comes into work and gathers all of that information about the about your client, about your prospect, and centralizes it in one dashboard. So whenever you have a meeting with someone, you can go to their profile and check like, okay, these have been the latest communications that we've had. These are the, his or her latest LinkedIn updates. Uh, this is what they like to tweet about. You know, this is the times that they've been appearing in the news. And uh, eventually what we want to do is start applying AI to extract conclusions about, you know, those relationships. So it's not only gathering that information, but what we will do with the information in the future. Basically um, telling you, okay, these are the commonalities or these are the common points that you and the other person have. These are the most uh, uh, eventful, you know, things that have happened in the other person's personal or professional life. Um, they uh, you maybe you should look out at this piece of news that should be relevant for your business or they like to tweet about blockchain. So there is a lot of things, you know, that we can do once we gather all of that information. And that, again, is sort of like our objective. We want to go beyond only the gathering to make sure, you know, that we can give you meaningful conclusions or basically meaningful information about that relationship in an intelligent manner. And um, also, even, for example, if you haven't spoken to someone, say, in uh, three months, four months, five months, whichever, will have Caro be able to remind you like, hey, you haven't caught up with this person in a very long time. It should be maybe now the moment to send them an email or send them a note or meet them for coffee, you know. But again, um, relationships and networking, obviously, has it has different angles so basically kind of what it's trying to do is offer that 360 solution from the moment that you meet someone um with you know the client activation with the uh, interactive digital business profiles to actually helping you build that relationship with an ai and um, ai driven and integrated relationship manager so obviously myself i'm a big believer in personal brands of ceos founders um mm-hmm. etc and you're doing a great job at the moment, making a lot of noise in the marketplace uh, as, as Patty yourself. So when I was doing my research, I found a quote from an article regarding the, one of the biggest challenges you've overcame in your career. And the quote read, evolving in such big ego environments has meant one thing to me. It's not enough to work hard to stand out. It requires working three times harder than any other man to get to the top. Could you dive a little bit deeper into the meaning behind that with me? Yeah. Um, So obviously, um, being a woman in male led environments is not easy. It it is changing a lot. Um, And, you know, a little by little, I think we're going through a very strong transition right now. So I think we are getting there. Um, but, uh, obviously, especially, you know, whenever you work like in investment banking, or even right now myself as a, as a, as a tech entrepreneur, sometimes it is hard to be taken seriously. Um, I also, you know, look, look younger than, than my actual age. I mean, I'm 30, but, uh, people, whenever they look at me, they, they think that I'm like 19 or 20. Um, <laughs> um, so many times, uh, I've been told, for example, in the being now again, like an entrepreneur, I've been asked whether I was serious about what I was doing. Um, and uh, obviously there was no reason behind or any, I basically hadn't told them like anything that should have led them to think that, that I was not being serious. You know, I work very long hours. I work 16 hours a day. I work on weekends. Um, I push very hard for my team and for my company, you know, to be alive and try to close deals and raise funding. And, and still I've received this type of comments, but maybe because I don't know, I'm not that prototype of, uh, you know, like a founder who walks around in his jeans and t-shirt sort of like from the, from the cool, like bro club. So, um, this means that, you know, in order to be considered just as serious, 
you need to do things better so that there is not a single chance that they could be able to doubt you or to think, you know, that you're the weak link or to think that, you know, you're just, you're not being serious and your mind is just like uh, somewhere else. I think about a family, kids, whatever, um, which to be honest, you know, like should be perfectly compatible. Um, but still, uh, unfortunately I have been, I have gone through this type of situations also, you know, like, again, like in banking, as you may imagine, there is a lot of, you know, like the macho culture, um, like, uh, I don't know, say for example, after work, well, people go and for beers, whiskey, and uh, maybe, or, or, you know, like certain type of, of clubs, and uh, when uh, when you're a woman and you're not into like this kind of things, um, well, then you sort of like get excluded from the cool kids club, if you want to call it that way. And therefore, the only way to compensate it is by working harder so that during working hours, even though you are you don't hold that strong relationship, maybe in terms of like a team, but during working hours, you need to excel at what you do. So um, you're considered basically just as, as good as the rest. It's a bit of a sad situation, but again, I think it's changing massively. With that in mind, obviously, you say you work three times harder and prove your worth at every step of the way. What would be the one bit of advice you would give yourself now if you go back to the start of your journey, either with Cado or in your career? What would that one bit of advice mm-hmm. be? Um, I would say, like, at the start of my career... Uh, I would have just told me like, okay, uh, just do do whatever you love, do whatever you like. I think, you know, I would have, it's not that I would have skipped many years or I would have really like changed what I've done because I think, you know, uh, maybe I wouldn't be here if I hadn't gone through banking. Um, But if I had really listened to what I liked at the time and not what I was told that I should be doing because it's better for a woman, I would have started a, a different degree for sure, 100%. Um, cause I mean, I liked maths. I liked, you know, I still actually love Legos when I look here and my, and my bookshelf is actually full of very big, like star Wars Legos and things, like, and things like that. So I think I would have done engineering for sure. Um, but I mean, but again, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm very happy of, uh, of how everything has come out. So obviously I wouldn't change it. Um, but in terms of the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, something that I would, have told myself is to be a little bit more patient because things take a lot longer than one person expects and again like this may be related to the fact that I don't mind working very long hours but the moment that you bring a team together uh, obviously you cannot expect people to be as involved emotionally as as you because I mean you're the founder you know like people have a life uh, you cannot burn out your team so uh, I remember when I started my journey, I thought like, oh my God, this is just going to take like six months. We're out in, uh, um, we'll be out in market with a super cool product. And the reality is that after six months, we were still halfway, everything was buggy. <laughs> um, no, one doesn't really tell you like, okay, um, you may have very big dreams, but the reality is that there's always, you know, problems along the way that you need to solve. Um it never works as well as you expect. Uh, and again, like it takes so much longer. So I think I would have told myself, you know, to, just to take into account that it's going to take a lot longer than, than you initially expect, because I would have think like stressed a lot less about fundraising and about team. If I had known like, OK, instead of thinking about six months, think about 12 to 18, because I mean, it's uh, it really changes, I think, the, the mindset. So to wrap up. I know your focus is trying to change the way we build professional relationships and obviously yeah. networking as a whole. In your opinion, what is the most important trait that someone would need to be an exceptional networker in the modern world? Oh, for me, it's uh, being charismatic, I would say. You know, like um, being able to connect with other people and uh, or more of the charismatics, I would say like empathy, actually. Um, you know, being able to connect with the people that you talk to, that you deal with, it's again, like it's a, it's a game changer and uh, you will not believe how much it can impact 
you know, business, because people feel it whenever you go into a, into a meeting and whether it is to do a sales pitch, whether it is to do business, whether it is, you know, to uh, um, build a partnership, if you go in just with a pure business or like sales killer mindset, people really like uh, either feel like suppressed or, you know, don't feel comfortable. So I think like, you know, having that sort of like open mind and being uh, empathic, empathic, sorry, and, uh, you know, being open to meet and understand people that maybe are not the same way or don't have the same personality as you and trying to understand them and understand what is their background story really helps a lot when it comes to, you know, connecting not only, I mean, at the personal level, but then once you connect to the personal level, it does help a lot when it comes to, you know, to actually closing business. I mean, mono, most of the, um, I would say either, you know, like partnerships that we've been doing or like potential, you know, sales opportunities that have appeared or uh, investor, you know, um, opportunities have come all through relationships and networking and meeting someone that connects with you at the personal level and because they like you then they'll make an intro to someone else and it sort of works that way so again really trying to connect with people at the personal level and having that empathy and trying to understand the background story of people I think that's what really differentiates a successful professional uh, from just an uh, from just an average one Thank you again so much for coming on. And where can the listeners find you online and find out more about you and your work? Yeah, so um, obviously, if you are interested in supercharging your networking and relationship management skills, feel free to go to caronetworks.com and we'll check out our, our website and our product. If you need a demo, obviously, well, you can obviously request a demo. As for myself, um, I mean, feel free, you know, to go on my LinkedIn. I try, I tend to be very open. Uh, so it's uh, Patricia Ricarte. You can check out, check me out on, on LinkedIn and uh, yeah, happy, happy to connect. Thank you so much for having me.